Well, our firm offers um, loan modifications. There's, um, there could be a few of you out there that don't know <laughs> after the recession and the, the meltdown of our real estate market, especially here in South Florida, many people are wondering what their options are. Well, some of the options of overcoming problems with a mortgage, especially with your houses, you owe more than the house is worth. Um, there are several options. One of them is handling loan modifications. What a loan modification um, is, is the actually negotiating with the mortgage holder, which is usually the bank, to um, restructure your mortgage in such a way as you can reduce your interest rate and even um, uh, extend the, lo the term of the, the loan in order to reduce your monthly payments. And many people think, well, if the house that I own is is underwater, that is, I owe much more than it's worth. I mean, why get out of bed in the morning and pay a mortgage? Well, well, the, there are several, several objections or several um, ideas that you should have. One of them is that if you, if you move to another house, you may end up paying more in rent than you would if you, than your monthly payment. Um, a second consideration is the fact that you never know, just as the, the um, real estate market tanked in the last few years, it could recover just as quickly or in the near future, in which case um, you'll be right back in the money again, uh, which would be a good thing. Um, and then finally, of course, the third consideration is that if things don't work out as you hoped, there's still the option of restructuring your mortgage then again or, or um, considering other options, which I'm going to get into here in a minute. Uh, another option of how to handle a, a mortgage debt relates to um, short sales. Um, that's basically selling the house for less than what you owe. Um, that's usually done with the lender's permission, and there's a whole process through that. Our law firm can help you with that. Um, and basically it involves contacting the lender, showing certain um, requirements that allow you to qualify for a program where you can sell the house uh, for less than what you owe and the buyer can then buy it and um, then you're released from the house. Now, depending on the state that you're in, um, sometimes there's the deficiency, which means that the lender um, at least in Florida, there's, it varies by state, but many states allow the lender to, um, it, the lender is not required to release what you, the, the difference between what you owe and what the house is allowed to be sold for. So like for example, let's say that your house is worth 100000 but you owe 200000 well, you can't sell it for the $200,000 price. No, sell, no buyer in their right mind would be willing to buy the property for double what you know, the house is worth. So that's where you go to your lender. Um, you seek the help of, I would suggest, a professional that's knowledgeable about this to help you negotiate with the lender and get a reduction um, in, or at least allow the sale of the property for the $100,000 um, current value. So you're left still owing $100,000 on the property. Now, the, what's key to the short sales is negotiating with your lender to waive the deficiency. That is, they give up their right to pursue um, any future right that they may have against you to collect that $100,000 difference. That's pivotal here. If um, they don't agree, of course, you have the option of not selling your, your home. Um, or you may enter into a promissory note where you agree to pay back that deficiency or that difference over a number of years or reaching some other means of negotiations with, with the lender. And um, we can help you with that. But obviously the best case scenario here is negotiating a waiver of the deficiency. Some states, like California, I believe, um, do not allow the lender to pursue you for a deficiency, so that's, that's not an, an issue in those states, um, thankfully. Um, you have the option also of a deed in lieu. What that means is that you give up your house for, um, basically, you're turning over the keys to the lender and saying, gosh, I can't pay this debt, uh, I give up. Um, here are the keys, I'm going to turn over this property. Usually the lender looks at whether or not you have clear title, meaning 
that there are no liens on the property like tax liens, um, that there are no uh, contractor liens, then you can, um, you know, they'll agree to take the deed in, in most circumstances. And again, the key here, as in short sales, is that you want to get a waiver of that deficiency. And that's critical here. Um, then finally, of course, we have um, the option of foreclosure defense. At least here in Florida, it's a, it's, it's a judicial state, meaning that when it comes to uh, foreclosures, if you can't pay your mortgage and, and default on it, the bank has to sue you, basically, in, in court and um, establish that they have the legal right to take the house away. Um, there are numerous defenses uh, in Florida. I do not have the time to get into it, but um, many defenses, there are legal defenses. The bank has the burden of showing that they have the legal right to take your house. Of course, you can defend on it by showing that their paperwork is out of order, for example. There was a big controversy about that um, not too long ago here in Florida and in many other states where the banks didn't have the correct paperwork to foreclose and where um, uh, sometimes the wrong lender was foreclosing on the property. So that is what we do, uh, one of the things we do, which is um, help you assert defenses. Um, sometimes we're able to succeed in our defenses and other times um, it becomes more difficult depending on how well their case is presented. But what it does help you with is looking for other, it, it may, given your circumstances, it may give you the time to work out other options, whether it's a, a settlement uh, by way of a short sale um, or giving the valuable time you need to have a loan modification application processed. Um, sometimes it takes several months. Uh, even when one cooperates and provides all the information that the lender requires, um, the process is lengthy and um, during which time the bank may foreclose on you anyway, take the property away and uh, just when you're close, closing in on being able to re reach a successful outcome like a loan modification or a short sale. So the foreclosure defense aspect of this is, is essential, critical, because it gives you the time that you need to work out other settlements. Um, even if it means saving up money for a few months to be able to save up for moving expenses. The, um, the other aspect to um, debts relating to a home um, relates to uh, condo association and homeowners associations. Um, in Florida, um, just like a bank, a homeowners association may bring a foreclosure action where they can um, you know, basically sue you like a bank can even for a few thousand dollars and try to take the property away that way. And what they do is even though when they succeed in a foreclosure, they're subject to uh, the mortgage on the property, sometimes um, homeowners associations do this in order to try to uh, rent the property um, or otherwise appease other homeowners who are uh, upset because they're paying there are HOA fees and one, one of the homeowners is not, be, is unable to. So what I suggest in those cases is that at least under Florida law, they do have a lot of leverage. Um, there are defenses, um, you know, which includes that the homeowners association is required to follow certain procedures and notices. And if they don't, then you could succeed in defeating their foreclosure action um, or substantially delaying it. But really the end game on that is either working out some other option, which is a short sale or a loan modification. But at the end of the day, it is best to try to settle and reach some kind of a favorable um, payment plan with the uh, association, which hopefully results in, in saving your home. The other um, um, debt issue that I'm going to cover here are non home related like credit cards, medical bills, and many other personal loans that you may have with, with a given individual uh, or a bank. And there are options that we can help you with regarding in, in that regard. And that is includes settlement um, where we can, depending on your circumstances, uh, if we show enough hardship, often lenders will consider that and, and um, either discount the total amount of the debt 
and you know for an immediate payment of X amount, whatever the, the lender's willing to consider and negotiate with, um, and or working out a payment plan where you work out um, a payment plan to settle the debt. So um, that is one option. Of course, another option is um, you know, litigating um, their entitlement to getting a judgment against you. In Florida, just like in mortgages, they have to bring a lawsuit against you. And they have to get what's called a judgment in order to try to seize your property, seize um, your whatever um, assets you have, cars, uh, other investment properties, and other um, uh, bank accounts. And you have to be careful about this because if you have bank accounts that are out there, um, it becomes a target. It's very easy for them to find. It's very easy for them to, it's called garnish. Um, and basically, you go to the bank one day to try to use your ATM card only to find out that your bank has been frozen. And here you are trying to buy food, medicine, uh, pay important bills, light bill, and you find out that your entire account has been frozen. Um, so it, it's really important not to ignore these kind of lawsuits. And I encourage you to at least speak to an attorney. I think you'll find that a small investment, uh, many, many attorneys like myself provide free consultations. And, um, or they, they, they may charge a nominal fee. I encourage you to go out and seek that advice. Um, they develop a strategy and uh, you see what your options are, which is that one of them being a defense of the very lawsuit that they're bringing against you. Oftentimes, credit cards don't have the right paperwork. They cannot establish their legal right to, to, um, to, to get a judgment. And if you take the initiative to defend against that, the banks will sometimes back down or negotiate a, a substantial settlement reduction so that you can settle the debt um, and move on with your life. Um, and a, a lawyer, I, I cannot emphasize how important that is. And like I said, the initial, the small investment that you make in a lawyer can pay amazing dividends for you and putting this problem behind you. Um, the, to the extent that a judgment has been obtained, and I'm part of an expert panel on the internet, um, you know, at, such as Avo and other, other um, internet sites where you advise people. I see um, many people coming in with questions about, oh my goodness, we have this judgment I didn't even know about. Or they just froze my bank account. The judgment is there. I, I didn't know about it, but I kind of ignored it. Um, well, under Florida law, you do have a lot of options. Um, fortunately, Florida has um, the state law provides a lot of protections. Uh, so to help you um, not become impoverished. Um, you know, the creditors, and I've seen this time and again, where they make your life, you know, miserable by, uh, you know, again, freezing your bank accounts, taking your, you wake up one morning to go to work, you find the police in your driveway impounding your vehicle. Um, There's actual true stories of people going through this hardship. So it's, it's best to have an attorney again help you weigh your options and there could be non-bankruptcy options that are available to you where you could um, keep them from collecting against you or certain assets like uh, under Florida law for example there's something called head of family where you can actually um, claim that you're the head you have dependents on you and uh, that are you have certain children, uh, parents, uh, other family members that rely on your income, and you're the breadwinner, if you will, of the family. Well, if you assert your defenses timely, and I would suggest professionally, in a way that the court will pay attention to, you can actually have your income protected from collections and garnishment. So the law is there, but it's, it's really, in, in this area, it's really up to you to seek the professional help, um, just like you would if, if say, you had a stomach pains or uh, an, an infection on a cut or, or whatever. You would go to a doctor, uh, get the professional help of somebody who can prescribe the right medication or the right treatment plan. The law is no different in that aspect. You should seek a professional to help you wherever you are, 
and hopefully not someone knowledgeable in this area that can help you assert these defenses. Um, they, it's tricky. It's, it's, it's very sophisticated, some of the arguments, and that's all the more reason why you should have an experienced attorney help you through that process. Otherwise, even though the law is there and would have otherwise protected, if it's not asserted correctly, unfortunately, you lose those rights. And um, I hate it when that happens, so don't let that happen to you. The, um, just so you know, other defenses and under Florida law, your homestead's completely protected, meaning your primary home is protected from, from um, any um, predators other than uh, somebody that you gave permission to, like a bank, like if you take out a mortgage, you give that lender permission to take your property if you default. But, um, and then there's a few other exceptions like contractors, but short of that, really no other creditor can take your primary home. They can't, um, even if the house is paid off, uh, under most cases, you, uh, your creditor cannot touch your house. Um, and that's one of the more valuable protections that is available here in Florida. And a lot of other states have that same protection, maybe to a lesser degree, but Florida is substantially uh, strong when it comes to that. So there are many other protections. I don't have the time to go into everything, but there's one other um, area I want to touch upon, and that's bankruptcy. When it comes to bankruptcy, there's, uh, for most consumers, um, th there are many types of bankruptcies, but really it boils down to a Chapter 7 or a Chapter 13 bankruptcy. Under a Chapter 7 bankruptcy, what that really is, is if you earn a certain income or um, that's established by the state, then you can qualify for a Chapter 7 bankruptcy, which is a liquidation. That, what that means is just a fancy word for basically getting rid of, of most of, if not all of your debt. If you earn a certain income or less, and it's a complicated formula, but again, an attorney can help you through that process, um, you, could, you are eligible to basically discharge or get rid of all of your debts. So it's a very complicated formula. I know I simplified it here, but I wanted to um, throw that out there as an option, a viable option that's available to many consumers that find themselves struggling with that. The, one of the key components, um, uh, a new law, uh, if you will, that's come down uh, recently from an appellate court in, in Chapter 7 bankruptcy is that if you have a primary mortgage, a first mortgage, and then you have a second mortgage, if the value of the property is less than the, the debt of the first mortgage, you can, in, in most cases, get rid of the second mortgage. Let me, let me provide an example. If you own a house that's um, uh, worth $100,000, but you have a first mortgage that's $110,000, that is, you owe $110,000. Well, in a chapter, bank, uh, chapter 7 bankruptcy, you, there's not much you can do about the first mortgage. There's loan modification programs and things that other options you can explore, but basically, in theory, that first mortgage is, is what they say is secured. It's, it's almost untouchable. But if you have a second mortgage or a line of credit for 50, 100, whatever thousands of dollars, well, in a Chapter 7, it's, um, um, it's possible to do what's called lien stripping or getting rid of that second mortgage. So you find yourselves just owing the mortgage, the first mortgage, while you discharge or get rid of the second mortgage. So that was an exciting development for um, us nerds, bankruptcy lawyers, and the industry because it was just uh, an exciting change in, in the law, especially for our area. Um, now, I'm going to um, turn this over to um, Daniel Tam. As I mentioned before, um, he's an extraordinary attorney, a good friend of mine, somebody who is um, a, a true champion for the consumer. And he's going to talk a little bit about Chapter 13s and um, consumer protection statutes. He's what I consider one of the, the foremost experts in this area. So with um, uh, he's, without further ado, I will turn this over to Daniel Tan. 
Please help me welcome him.